Hello, I'm Chef Rob Stinson, and this is Fit to Eat. On this episode, we're going to be making a healthy barbecue chicken. We're also going to make a Swiss chard and butter bean salad. Everything you need for a healthy picnic. We'll get started after a quick break, so come right back. Let's get started with chicken breast. Today I'm using bone-in breast because they're so flavorful, but you could use this with whatever is your favorite, breast, thigh, even wings. You know, I love taking good, fresh chicken. It's something I eat at least four, maybe five times a week. So the trick is make some different preparations. Now what we're looking at right here is a skinless bone-in chicken breast. Let's just take this so you can see bone on the bottom, breast on top, the skin removed, why it's healthier that way. Also, easier to season with the kind of direction I'm going on this today. And what we're going to use, we're going to take a little bit of our onion. Now remember, we talk about onion powder as opposed to onion salt or granulated onion. This has nothing but onion all natural and it's easier to use. A little bit of our white pepper and again want to get a nice seasoning on this because it's going to go in the pan and some of this is going to come off. But what we're going to do with this is a little different. We're going to actually take this and do a stove top smoking. Awesome. I love it. Little black pepper. So we got white pepper, black pepper, our onion powder. And then we're going to also take some ground Dijon mustard. And you can find this, they might call it English mustard, Dijon mustard. I love the flavor that the mustard gives it and it's delicious to have. So try and remember it. You can use all of these in your own measurements. Now the final, which gives a neat color, is our smoked paprika. And I'm gonna kinda talk about something you can do if you can't find smoked paprika because you might find it in the store and it might be really expensive and you want to say, well, wow, you know, I want to find something that's easier to afford than that. And we can actually smoke our own. So let's go ahead now. We're going to go into our smoker with this. All right. And you're saying, wait, smoker? Where is the smoker? This Dutch oven is the best stovetop smoker I've ever used. Take the lid off and you can see on one side inside those are actual hickory chips. There's a grate. We're going to take the chicken, place it on the other side, pull that back so you can see it a little bit, perfect. And it's directly not over the heat where the chips are going to be right over the flame. All right, we're going to cover this again. Then we're going to take and turn that flame on medium high. We're going to come back to it so I can show you how incredible this is and it's such a simple way to handle doing stovetop smoking. Now look, important note, you're working with chicken. This is true with pork. This is true with raw beef. The plate you had your raw product on, let's get rid of it. All right, you don't want to come back to it. You don't want anything else on there. Once it's smoked, it's actually going to be partially cooked. We're going to finish that in the pan. But where we got to go next, we need to do the watermelon barbecue. So you can see right here in front, we've got my uh, beautiful, fresh, and this is seedless watermelon, where you basically find that in every store now. You know, and look at that, huh? Beautiful. The amount I'm putting in is about a quarter of that slice. We're going to put this into our blender, and I've taken the liberty of cutting and quartering some beautiful pieces. Let's take it and actually drop it in to the blender. You're going to see some go all the way to the bottom, some do not. Don't worry. It'll all work out. Then go ahead and put our lid back on. Now we're going to 
power this on a low speed at first. Then we're gonna actually speed it up because now oh, there it goes. There it goes. And all we want to do is liquefy it. That is absolutely perfect. And then take this, bring it off, watch our blade, and take the juice. Isn't that great? Really very simple, nothing fancy to it, and that is going to become the base of our barbecue. So let's go over now to the pan, because I've got lots of ingredients that we're going to add into that. I'm going to use nearly all of that. I'm taking the liberty of getting that pan warm. I'm going to turn it back on. And we're going to put it on a pretty good high temperature, because we want this to reduce. All right, in here. Lots of ingredients, so garlic, you know, I love garlic. Got to have our garlic, and that's going to cook directly in. The same Dijon dry mustard that we talked about. I love to put a little hot sauce, whatever your favorite is. Barbecue sauce has got to have some spice, in my opinion. Black pepper and white pepper. So now we've got our spices in. Stir that around a little bit. Really looks good too. We're gonna to take now and put a little tomato paste in here. And listen, let me mention, some of you may not have it. Some of you may not be able to see it or find it in the store. It's in most stores. If you can't, we're gonna actually use a little ketchup as well. Barbecue sauce is typically about 90% ketchup, so this is dramatically different, really unique and healthy and fun. Brown sugar, which we're going to stir in there, which will add that caramelization that we want. Got to have a little horseradish in there. Little horseradish. Honey. Honey, again, natural, refined. This is local honey that I buy at the local farmer's market. I love using honey. It's got great qualities in and of itself. And it's so much better than using a refined sugar. Now, what am I putting in here? This is the smoked paprika, the same thing that we seasoned that with initially. And what we want to do is kind of get that outdoor barbecue flavor in our sauce. All right, now that we've got it to this point, we're going to actually kick the temperature up a little bit, do a little quick housekeeping here, try and set ourselves up where we've got plenty of room. And I want to peek over here at the smoker. All right, now watch. Remember, your flame is on underneath the side of the smoker. The chicken's on the opposite. So it's not really cooking. What we're doing is just imparting that smoke flavor. And now, holding it away, let's take a peek. And you can see, oh yeah, plenty of smoke in there. And we're going to let that run about six minutes, which is the perfect amount of time it will need. Now, this barbecue sauce coming along great in front. We're going to move it back, turn the heat on under it, and keep stirring it. It's already got such a great flavor, and who would think watermelon? All right, now, I've taken the liberty of actually smoking a chicken breast ahead of time. We're going to take a little of our zero fat spray, go into our pan, move it off the heat, turn the temperature up, and place that chicken bone side down initially to start actually cooking through the meat that's on the bone. Again, we're still going to get rid of that plate. We're not going to use that plate again. And remember, it's still not thoroughly cooked. All right. Chicken is a great lean meat. 
and has less saturated fat than meat. Chicken is also a great source of protein, and protein helps protect against bone loss in older people. Chicken is a fantastic source of vitamin B, which helps protect the body against cancers. Just a four ounce chicken breast contains 78% of the daily recommended amount of niacin, and a recent study found that regular consumption of niacin-rich foods like chicken help protect against Alzheimer's disease and other age-related cognitive diseases. That's one you sure want to remember. And okay, while that's cooking up, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll start on the Swiss chard salad. Ard's Dairy in Ruth, Mississippi has been in operation since the late 1800s. Today they have grown to over 1,200 acres with more than 200 milk producing Holstein cows. The thing about being a dairy farmer is uh, you're not just in a barn milking. There's so many other things that it requires. Obviously just ma maintenance of your animals just to keep them healthy, but you have a uh, corn planting season that's a big thing for us you know just like we grow a garden and put vegetables up for the winter we do the same thing for our cows this land has actually been in our family since the late 1800s my great-grandfather bought a small piece of property which we're actually standing on part of the original land and my grandparents started milking in the 1940s my parents, they grew, grew cotton and a little corn and things like that, and then I guess they just decided they wanted the dairy. And, and just looking back from my childhood up, I know that we had a little better living uh, with the cows milking than our neighbors did just growing cotton. I think it's so important to support your, your local farmers because this is the, the heartbeat of our country. Um, you see so many new farmers markets popping up all over in, in different towns uh, around our state. And I just really encourage people to go and support these farmers. I mean, for one thing, you know your produce is local, where it's coming from. And these are people who, they care about what they're doing. They're not um, in it really to, to make a dollar. They're not trying to get rich on selling you milk or, or tomatoes or whatever they're growing. They're growing a quality product and they're trying to share it with us. And it's, um, it's a healthy alternative, it's a safe alternative, and it is important. I think it's, in, it's vital for our small communities and our small farmers. I kind of feel like my operation is more of a family thing. You know, it's, even though it's just my wife and I and then Julie's here, we do have some employees here, but uh, I consider the size of my operation is more like a family farm than a, than a corporation, you know. Uh, we do our best to ship and produce quality milk that when it hits the shelf, it'll have a long shelf life and people will be glad to buy it. Welcome back. Swiss chard is one of the most popular vegetables along the Mediterranean and is second to spinach in nutrient richness. Swiss chard is a member of the beet family and can be found in most supermarkets and farmers markets. What I really love about it is it, it pretty much grows year round here. And look at this incredible color. Unbelievably, it's not just flavorful, but really pretty. So I love to use it and it gives an added flavor to what we're trying to do. So where we're gonna go right now, and I want you guys to remember, over here on the side we have our barbecue sauce cooking. Our breast is actually already sitting in that pan ready to finish. And I'm gonna turn that breast back on the heat. Turn it over. And we'll be going back to it. Now, let's go ahead and all we're gonna do is take about four of these leaves. So pretty, I like to leave it out where you can at least see it though. And then I roll it to julienne, slice it. Start at the tip. It's basically all edible. And let's... Yeah, 
And I think everybody can do this. All you're doing, and look at this when it's done. You've got what looks almost like shredded coleslaw, but it's a beautiful bitter green. And actually, you know, being part of the beet family, that's where this red comes from. I don't use the stalks, just so that you know, I don't use those. So now we've got a nice fresh pile of our Swiss chard. And uh, let's take now, because we're going to actually sear and cook our turnip root. And you know, the, re the recipe really could be done for turnip and turnip greens. Sometimes you just simply can't find that which you need. So you can always substitute another. We're going to cut these in half. Let's move this in front so we can really get a good look at it. Take another turnip root, because we're going to use about two small ones. Save all of that for your stock pot, guys. Don't throw it away. And now just cut that turnip down. So they're nice, kind of half silver dollar slices. Very simple, easy. I love turnip root. What are we going to do with it? We're going to sear it and brown it so it becomes a good portion of our turnip bringing salad. All right, we've got a pan hot. Let's do our same little trick on this. Zero fat spray, your pan coating, all over. You don't want it to stick. And take our turnip root first in the pan. Then we're going to add our flavoring for this. Lots of uniqueness going on in here. So we're going to add in our fresh minced garlic, okay? Some beautiful sliced red bell pepper. And the same with our onion. So at this point, you've got a blend of your turnip root, your red bell pepper, your onion, and your garlic. So you know the next thing we need to do is season it. A Little bit of pepper all around. We're going to add a little coriander. Coriander, kind of a base of ground herbs like cilantro, and a little curry. I want to add a different flavor into this. Don't be scared to try some new seasonings that you may have. Just be sure that they're not salted seasonings. Okay, now let's go ahead. Swiss chard, in studies, Swiss chard has been shown to have the ability to help pancreatic cells regenerate. Swiss chard can also help protect the liver from damage and help the body to control blood sugar levels. So you got all kinds of wonderful things it can do. Let's keep searing these. We're going to let that cook a little bit more, turn the heat on it up. And at this point, let's go back over to our chicken. Turn it over because we want it to be thoroughly cooked. Our barbecue sauce. We've got a lot going on in this one. The barbecue sauce is nearly done. You want it to reduce in about half, maybe a third to a half. And at that point, you get nice concentrated flavors of the watermelon in there. And you can really taste the watermelon. You're going to say, you got to be kidding me. He's putting watermelon with chicken. Listen, if you ate chicken as much as I do, and I'm not joking, I eat it at least four, probably five times a week, then you absolutely want to start cooking it in different preparations so you don't get tired of it. I think it's real important that you do. All right, so what do we have here? We've got a beautiful hickory smoked chicken that we're going to top with a watermelon barbecue sauce. And then we're working on these incredible greens that we're going to throw with this. And all we're going to do is blanch them in there. But now we've got some butter beans. We're going to actually take these drained butter beans. And I want to spice it up a little bit, a little bit of our crushed red pepper. Man, it looks so good. All right, we're just going to wilt 
our Swiss chard a small amount. That's all. We don't want to leave it in there till it gets stringy. Turn our barbecue sauce down. Kind of mix it around. And now what the trick is, watch. This is just water. Okay. We're going to add in, and I want to do this in a separate little bowl. We're going to add in a little dry mustard, a little of our balsamic vinegar, a little bit of vegetable stock, and the juice of a lemon. Perfect. We're going to kind of use that as a drizzle with our greens, and it'll add a really nice flavor to it. All right, well, you know, let's see where we are on these greens, because I tell you, we're going to pull the greens, put them into our drizzle sauce. They've wilted just perfectly. As you can see, they're steaming hot. That's about all of them. Want to keep the rest of it to go on top. Now we're going to toss these a little more. Oh, the aroma is absolutely incredible. This is a meal. You know, the nice part about this salad, too, it's equally tasty if it's not hot. You could actually cook this, bring it with you in separate components. Little dash there. It's about a half a teaspoon we set in. The recipe of olive oil, and I didn't even use that much. It doesn't need it. Look how beautiful that is. All right, let's go back over to our chicken breast. We're going to put it at, with the breast side down, the bone side up, turn that heat down. I want to have a little fun with you. All right, we got to take a little walk over to the smoker. Let's see just where the smoke has gone, because at this point, we want the smoke in the chicken. And look at that. You saw it was billowing out before. <laughs> Inside here, you've got the chicken exactly the same as the one that we pulled out and used. So you can see it really works. It's absolutely incredible. Let's try and get that right on camera. There you go. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's got a natural kind of brown hue to it. That's smoke. We can leave that open. Going to come back here. Our chicken is browned perfectly. So I know it's just about ready. So we're going to go take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll talk about the nutritional information. And remember, you can find links to all our recipe at Facebook page at facebook.com slash MPB fit to eat. So come right back. This is a great meal. Let's talk about the nutritional information. 528 calories, 47 grams of carbs, 69 grams of protein, and 6 grams of fat, 10 grams of fiber. I think it makes this chicken dish about the healthiest, or at least one of the healthiest, we've ever done. So while you were gone, I was a little busy, and I took the liberty of putting our turnip, I'm sorry, our actual uh, Swiss chard with our turnip and butter bean topping on the plate, all right? Leaving a little space over here, because here's where we go next. The chicken itself is in the pan. We're going to turn that heat up. Now we're going to take and actually cover it with that barbecue sauce. Move it around, and here's the fun part. Browning it on the bottom. Top it on top. I love the part of the sauce that blackens in the pan because it's going to make it look like you did this on a grill if you do it correctly, all right? So watch what we're doing. Just moving it around in the pan. Absolutely delicious. And there you go. I mean, is that incredible? 
This is a great, healthy option for your next cookout or anytime you're craving sweet barbecue chicken. And I tell you, that flavor is great. Enjoy the vibrant, leafy vegetables that do so much to keep you healthy. And remember to join the discussion on Facebook. Until next time, Chef Rob Stinson with Fit to Eat and enjoy it.